lost two active members of the city of Orange family. It has been a long and difficult road to the mayor's seat in the city of Vaughan. Linda Jackson says when she decided to follow in her mother's footsteps and run for mayor, it was an exciting time for her. But as the election campaign progressed, things became more and more ugly. She and incumbent Michael DiBiase got into a war of words over everything from published news stories to building permits. She called him a bully. He accused her of fabricating lies, and it just got worse. A series of Jackson's personal emails to a York Regional Police officer ended up on DiBiase's doorstep. Then, days before voters went to the polls, Jackson's signs were defaced. We were extremely upset when we started getting the calls very early in the morning that hundreds and hundreds of our signs had been defaced. Uh, we knew that it just wasn't kids, that it was an organized, well-planned plot to, to uh, discredit me and to put the devil throughout it. It was extremely upsetting uh, for all of us, for, for myself and for my family. Jackson says she and her team members did the only thing they could do. They worked as fast as they could to get the signs down. We certainly were not going to uh, back down from that, and, and it certainly showed uh, what my opponents would go to and to what lengths they would go to to discredit me and, and a Jackson name. But smear campaigns are not new to the Jackson family. Back when my mother uh, ran for mayor, uh, she actually had a, a brochure that she put out that the vandals were out and they had stolen all of her signs and they had done all written, you know, uh, articles in the paper, but they, they did the same thing to my mother and so we knew what to expect. Jackson says the idea of quitting the campaign when the going got rough never crossed her mind. If anything, with the, with the election and what that put, put us through, if anything, it just made me more resolved to keep going. The residents of the city of Vaughan have spoken. Then, on an election night full of surprises in York Region, the spotlight was on the city of Vaughan, when Jackson upset DiBiase and won the election by 90 votes. To me, it was like a David and Goliath. Uh, to be able to go in there and, and, and to win the election and, and to become mayor of the city was the greatest honor. Jackson was elated, but it was short-lived. Within the next day, we had heard that there was, uh, they were asking for a recount and go through it, which, which I had no problem with, because certainly if I had been on the other side, I certainly would have asked for the same thing, because you want to ensure, plus I wanted to ensure that I was truly the mayor of the city of Vaughan. Vaughan Council approved DiBiase's request for an electronic recount. Jackson came out on top in that recount and with an additional four votes. But that did not satisfy DiBiase. He wanted the results declared null and void. This because he and his lawyers claimed there were three faulty optical reader machines used to count the ballots. He wanted a whole new election. But a new market judge saw it differently. He ruled there would be no new election. Instead, there would be another recount. When I heard there was going to be a, a second recount, of course, I uh, disappointed because, of course, we have to then, you know, it takes away from what I'm doing. I can't focus. I'm a new mayor. Uh, I want to be able to get in and learn the job of, of being the mayor, and, uh, th and we couldn't. We had to uh, go into court. We had to hire lawyers to, to support it. Uh, certainly, uh, I had no problem with the first, but going in with the second and going into court, the recount just really took a lot out of us. In addition to the emotional stress Jackson was dealing with during this period, the recount was taking a toll on the Jackson family financially. I don't know what's worse, the, the emotional toll it took on myself and my family or the financial toll. I'm presently left with a bill of almost $100,000 personally that I have no way of, of fundraising or to collect. So I now have to, no fault of my own, I have to, uh, I have a $100,000 bill for the recount to pay my lawyers. The results of that second recount confirmed Jackson was indeed the winner of the mayor's race in Vaughan. She was now ready to move on and run the city, but it wasn't meant to be. On part two of our series, Linda Jackson, The Good, The Bad and The Ugly, we take a look at another court battle that lay ahead for the new Managing mayor. Managing growth is a complex task which involves both challenges and opportunities. With the messy election campaign and two recounts behind her, Linda Jackson was ready to get down to the business of running the city of Vaughan. But a new battle lay ahead. Two Vaughan residents claimed she circumvented donation limits under the Municipal Elections Act. A judge ordered a compliance order of her election campaign finances. I have to understand their motives. 
I mean, the, with, the, with a compliance audit, you have to understand is that any resident in the city of Vaughan has the right to request an audit of any candidate's campaigns. Why are they only choosing me? Like the second recount, Jackson says this court battle is draining her emotionally and financially. Yes, the, uh, the compliance audit uh, presently, I'm in about almost $40,000. Jackson says she knows how much the battle is costing her, which makes her wonder how are her opponents able to finance this court battle. All of this, she claims, is getting in the way of her doing her job. I feel sorry for the residents of the city of Vaughan who voted for me, who expected me to do a job, and I'm unable to do that job because I'm constantly being harassed or harangued in the media. My name is being dragged through for no undue reason. My opponents have to realize the election is over and that we need to move on and let me do the job that I was elected to do. We will deliver a customer-driven collection. Now to add to her troubles, when Jackson is back at City Hall, she says she faces another challenge. I'm having uh, some problems with the council. Of course, being as a new mayor, I mean, of course, there is a time of uh, a period of adjustment. Uh, since I have been elected, I have never spoken out against any member of my council. Um, and, uh, but I, I am finding it very challenging. I have tried everything since I've been elected mayor to extend that olive branch, to try to work with them. Uh, I know that all of them, uh, or the majority of the council, supported uh, the former mayor in his bid for re-election. I understood that, so there is a time of adjustment. But I think I've gone above and beyond the, the call of duty to try to extend that, and there's still some members of council who will not work with me. And Jackson claims there's more. It's the underlying uh, issues that are going on uh, with the council. Uh, documents are being leaked. Uh, my emails are being leaked. Uh, confidential memos out of closed sessions are being handed over to uh, my opponents. Uh, they're getting into the hands of the media. Y you can't run a city when you have a council that, is, that is, is wants to be disruptive. Her challenges with council, the court battles, and the recounts have all been part of Jackson's life as a politician. And she accepts that, but she says one of the most disturbing things she's come across since being elected is fear for her family's safety. According to the mayor, she has proof her children and husband have been followed by private investigators. To know that your daughters are being followed by private investigators, to know your husband's being followed by a private investigator, uh, by my, uh, hired by my opponents to dig dirt on my family. You know, I'm the politician, I'm the member of council, you know, my family is off limits. Now, despite all that's happened, Jackson has managed to get some things done at City Hall. On part three of our series, Linda Jackson, the good, the bad, and the ugly, we take a look at what she has accomplished. We want to help you spend, and we want it now. Linda Jackson has been Vaughn's mayor for nearly a year and a half now. She says the hours are long and she's rarely home, but she loves the job. She has plenty of support from her family and husband, Mario. She says she's in this to affect change and to help people. It's challenging with, with my council, but the thing is we have been able to get a lot of things through. That includes one of her election promises. My council has supported me on the uh, implementation of the Integrity Commissioner. These five, from these five key areas of focus, strategic... Focus. The Integrity Commissioner will certainly review any, uh, any complaints or concerns from members of the public with respect to uh, to conduct of members of council. Jackson, who lists business trips to Israel and Italy as two other highlights of her term so far, is most proud of what council has been able to do for residents of Vaughan when it comes to taxes. I'm very proud that we've been able to hold the line on property taxes. Our increases this, this year went through. And they're, they're, you know, we, no one likes tax increases. I don't like it. I mean, certainly I, I have to pay my tax bill as well. But I think that as long as we're providing uh, good service to our residents, we do provide high level of service. I'm very proud uh, this year in particular that we were able to come in with, it, with a very balanced budget um, with just slightly above inflation. Jackson has a long list of things she'd like to work on during the rest of her first term. We want to be able to continue to hold the line on taxes. I want to be able to promote Vaughn. I want to be able to get in more businesses in Vaughn to be able to keep our tax rate low. We pride ourselves in Vaughan as being the lowest res one of the lowest residential tax rates in the whole GTA, and, and we're very proud of that, and I want to continue that. I want to get a hospital. We need to get that hospital going. We need to be able to, to get the location, and I want to put the sign on the lawn, this is where the hospital is going. Our residents deserve a hospital. 
As for her opponents, Jackson has one message for them. She says she isn't going anywhere. My father said to me, he says, uh, Linda, this is nothing new for the Jacksons. He said, uh, your mother's first term of office was horrible as well. She, uh, she, she was sued um, by some, they tried to take our home uh, for, for, for a nonsense suit. Uh, they set up a, a, a local paper to, and all it was, this paper was set up was to discredit her and to write nasty articles about her. So my dad said, look, they're doing the same thing to you that they did to your mother the first term of office. Uh, I guess it has something to do with the Jacksons. They, uh, but they did the same thing to my mother, but it just seems to be a lot more malicious now. How did your mother get through it? Strong and determined woman. Yeah, I think I learned well from her. The mayor says the election is long over. She has moved on, and she would like to see her opponents move on. I really feel that it's, it is time that I speak out. I mean, I have not spoken out. But more and more, people are saying to me, when are you going to stand up and stop this? When are you going to stand up and start defending yourself? I'm in grocery stores. I'm at gas stations. I'm, I'm, I'm anywhere. Residents come up and talk to me and say, we still support you. We're not paying attention to these newspaper articles. And that's what makes me, me, me do the job that I was elected to do. And that's what makes me wake up in the morning and continue to fight. In Vaughan, Phil Martino, First Local.